Wildlife crime is a serious issue. It's a global issue. It's transnational in nature. It's right at the top there with other illegal criminal activities, such as human trafficking, narcotics. Wildlife trade is up at the top. It hasn't necessarily received the attention that's required in order to fight wildlife crime. In this country, the main ingredient is wildlife. So in our protected areas, there are tourism attractions. Malawi, we do account a lot of poaching. Majority are poor, especially people bordering protected areas. Some they do this to find their day-to-day -day, uh, living. And also some they, are, they do it just because they don't love nature. Now Malawi has all the big fives, but because of poaching, most of them were almost extinct. We have to introduce the rhinos, we have to introduce the giraffes, we have to introduce uh, some of the cats. We are going to make as much noise as we can so that people know once we catch you, we are going to trace where you got that wildlife specimen from. In the past, our sentences were fines, law sentences, people given even suspended sentences. So for people to commit wildlife offences, for them it was easy because they will know that if I am arrested, I go to court, I will pay a fine and I will be free. Some of the contributing factors then was that the evidence that was being presented in court wasn't that quite good. Now with the coming in of a lot of trainings to our investigators, our prosecutors, it will help us a lot to prove our cases beyond a reasonable doubt. We are able to stand in court. No one can question our evidence. And uh, we are pinning down these, these criminals. And we are hoping that through that, people will start avoiding Malawi either as a route or coming here to watch our animals. TRACE enable countries to use forensic science in wildlife law enforcement. So TRACE and Traffic, we've had a strong partnership for many years. It's all about empowering members of the criminal justice system, giving them the right tools in order to prosecute wildlife crimes. In Malawi, it's a, a really a, a crime scene to courtroom spectrum, and we work across all of these areas. The first stage is to identify, uh, collect and secure the evidence at a crime scene. We have a dedicated team of rangers, dedicated team of officers, of investigators. Every day they keep on risking their lives. Intercepting poachers who are usually heavily armed uh, is dangerous and there are rangers being killed every year to do this. Our main role, once a case has been identified, then the, someone is arrested, so it is our duty to further investigate that case. And if he, there is a crime scene involved, it is also our duty to collect evidence at the crime scene. In the past, it was uh, a bit difficult, the way we were handling our evidence, challenges uh, to identify uh, some wildlife products, especially uh, processed ivory. I was one of the people who was sent um, on training by Trace, and I got the skills. I trained the fellow rangers, and then at the moment, we do not have um, issues when it comes to ivory identification in court. We do on-site training or we invite them to a place where they can receive their training. A lot of the work we do at Crime Scene and Evidence Management is regarding sort of train the trainer models. In the last uh, 12 months, we've, we've witnessed a number of these instructor cohorts going out and training their, their guys in the field, and they're doing a fantastic job of it. With the coming in of stress, we have seen that we'll be able to properly uh, preserve our evidence. They have also uh, trained us on how we should manage our crime scene. In case we need to take uh, samples of blood, how we can package our evidence, and also how we should transfer that same evidence uh, to different uh, players. 
stress has put the Department of National Parks at a certain level because of the capacity buildings we are doing now. If an animal is dead, I feel bad that maybe somewhere I'm not doing my job well. I work with my colleagues to make sure that that does not happen again. We have had cases whereby rangers being been killed, injured by uh, criminals uh, as they go about carrying out investigations. But they have never relented and they continue and the, the battle goes on. So I'm really, really very grateful to my team. At the moment, our investigators, we, we, we are proud of them when they come to court to present their evidence. We have expert witnesses. We used not to have expert witnesses to come to court and tell the court this is real ivory. I can tell you this is ivory because of ABCD. They are able to do that because of the uh, support, the training that uh, Trace is providing to our investigators. So we really appreciate for the good job you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> The second stage is to do with evidence management and looking at the chain of custody. So this is making sure that somebody is responsible for the evidence at all times and that evidence can be demonstrated to be secure and not interfered with. In the past we had the challenges of chain of custody. So this crime scene management, there's also a component of chain of custody from the recovering officer to the investigator to the identification officer, up to court. As a Department of National Parks, we have developed the standard operating procedures on how we should manage the evidence, which is currently used uh, countrywide. Before the coming in of this concept, there was no proper handling of evidence from the crime scene to the court. We have had cases where exhibits have been stolen in, our, in the court's facilities. Now we have our own facilities in our own uh, offices. We have another facility at our courts. And the way those facilities were constructed, it will be difficult even for those who would want to go and steal, to go and break them and steal whatever they want. It's not possible. The third stage is analysis of the evidence to make sure that we actually understand uh, where it's come from, what it is, and how it can be useful um, to inform the investigation. In wildlife forensics, we want to make sure we can trace where the crime was committed. So it's traceability. We are linking the crime to the site. When that material comes here, we are looking for the DNA. It could be any wild animal, any part. Is it a tusk of an elephant? Is it skin? Is it just hair? In the past, when we present the cases in court, we were not able to have an expert witness. Because of that, it was difficult for the courts to believe us that the exhibits that we are presenting to them were real. There was an case in the southern region where someone was selling a game meat. The defense counsel was arguing that, how do we know that this is game meat? You are saying this is impala meat, you are saying this is uh, pushback meat. It was difficult for us as a state to prove that, yes, the meat that the accused person was found in possession with was really game meat. Having a facility in, a, in Malawi, it will help us a lot because we won't have any challenges again with the defense counsels in court uh, because it's just a matter of going to the lab with the samples. We get the results, we present them to court uh, with an expert. We are good to go. So together in partnership within the country, we are able to fight the illegal trade. The fourth stage is taking those evidential reports, the forensic reports, uh, and making sure that they're presented and communicated to the courts effectively. Everything pivots around evidence collection and what we do in the labs that Trace does in terms of forensics analysis. These are critical components if we want a court case to go through the system and be prosecuted accordingly. Comparing to 2023 from 2015-16, I would say that uh, cases have reduced for a number of factors. Uh, we used to have 
like three or four arrests in a day, mostly on pangolin cases and ivory cases. And the, at the moment, I'm sure because of the awareness and the way people have been convicted, the types of sentences people have been getting from our courts, I think that has helped us a lot to reduce the way people have been committing these crimes. Collecting information from the courts, as well as court monitoring of live cases, allows us to do two main things. The one is to determine what's happening on the ground in terms of the legal trade of wildlife specimens. Are there any emerging threats? Um, and to pick up trends that are happening. And the second part that's, that's very important is also learning how the criminal justice system is, is processing cases. At least these days, we are no longer coming out of the courts being embarrassed. Most of our cases, because of the support that we have, the way oh, both parties, the prosecutions, the defense counsels have been trained, people are aware, they know that there is no way they will go to court and they will come out for free. This is challenging work, but with the support and collaboration of multiple partners, like Traffic, the US government, and local organizations, such as the Longway Wildlife Trust, and of course, players of People's Postcode Lottery, we're starting to see forensic evidence lead to successful prosecutions. To have a success in courts, is, well, it's very rewarding because it shows that the work that we've been doing and, and the work that we do together with Trace and the tools and the information that's been shared has been used by members of a criminal justice system. One of the overall ambitions of what we're doing is to make sure that we're able to investigate the organised crime elements so people higher up the food chain. We are able now to get to the kingpins, not uh, those who are sent by these kingpins. And that alone has sent a very big signal, probably. We value them a lot. They, they are treasures of this land. We are putting much effort to protect them. We say only elephants wear ivory in our land. They should know we are not sleeping. We are working 24-7 to protect these species. I do feel proud and and very happy that we are getting all the support that we can from within the superiors, but also, like I said, the uh, players of the People's Postcode Lottery.